Hi guys, welcome to today's video. This is Yash and I am a blockchain developer. Today we are going to be discussing about what is blockchain. So the agenda for today is definitions of blockchain. We are going to see what are the features of blockchain and what are different types of blockchain. So let's go ahead and see what is the definition of blockchain. We have three definitions as you can see. We'll break them down one by one. These are taken from multiple sources. The first one is blockchain is a peer to peer decentralized and distributed system. Let's break it down further ahead. There are three words to understand peer to peer decentralized and distributed. So a peer to peer uh, network is a similar network to what we see in torrents. So there are multiple nodes running around the world and they keep this network up. So peer to peer is similar to that. The next word is decentralized. So basically decentralized means there is no central authority that runs this network. So there will be multiple nodes around the world that decide uh, of how the network should run what should be the functions of the network and so on and so forth and distributed is basically what peer to peer is it is globally distributed and uh, these nodes keep the system up so this was the first definition let's look at the second definition a blockchain is a growing list of records called blocks that are securely linked together using cryptography now what does this mean it is a growing list of records. List of records is basically in real world, we maintain it in ledgers, correct? So blockchain is also called as a digital ledger. All the records are stored inside blocks. Now these blocks form the block part of blockchain. Blocks that are securely linked together using cryptography. These links, the blocks are linked together forming a chain. Uh, together called as blockchain and the security mechanism used is cryptography which is an advanced topic we might make uh, videos about cryptography later so that is more or less about wikipedia's definition and to sum it all together i have made this third definition that uh, makes it self explanatory explanatory it is basically a digital decentralized ledger to maintain transaction records that that's what blockchain is let's see what are the features of blockchain so the first feature is transparency uh, blockchain is a ledger it is a digital public ledger we can view records uh, on uh, on chain like records are available to view on chain uh, and easy to access on chain transaction now what this means i'll just switch my screen to the etherscan browser so this is where ethereum transactions can be seen who has sent money to whom or what transaction has happened let's uh, look at this so this uh, eth explorer has what is the current price of eth uh, also how many transactions are processed what is the gas fee if you are not aware of these terms, uh, we'll be making uh, another breakdown of what gas means, what are ether prices, market cap, all of that in the f f coming videos. Uh, for now, let's look at what transactions have happened. Uh, let's see the latest one. So this is the transaction hash that has been generated. The status of transaction is successful. This is the block number in which uh, the transaction is saved the list of records are saved inside blocks that's what we had discussed and this is the block number uh, timestamp was nine minutes ago uh, this is the account address from which the transaction was sent to this address and the value of ethereum that was sent is 0 0.11 ether which is around 217 dollars so all of that this is like visible to us we can see who has done what we just don't know who is this id and who is this id but we can see everything transparently so that's what our first point is now let's move ahead so immutability immutability is basically the data that is uploaded on blockchain cannot be deleted ever 
it is there and uh, as we can see data cannot be altered blockchain is append only append only means we cannot uh, remove or delete data we can just add another data to it and uh, no updates in record can be made so updates as in we cannot change a certain thing that is given it will be there let's say i uh, make a transaction in which i set my name to yash then i cannot just change that yash to something else let's say blockchain i cannot do that so that is why blockchain is immutable let's move ahead the third point is security so cryptography is used for hashing accounts have private and public key and all the data is encrypted so in this uh, we can explain by saying that cryptography again is a term that we'll be discussing later on uh, but it is you can imagine it to be a security mechanism that is built uh, uh, alongside blockchain there are uh, accounts li like we saw the public and private keys so this is the public key of an account x and this is an public key of account y so these are the public keys and to uh, secure them we don't have passwords we have private keys so that is how it is this is called asymmetric key cryptography which is again an advanced term we will go into it in the future videos and all the data is en encrypted using the hashing algorithm uh, the next point is cost efficiency so in this mediators are not required all the things are coded uh, using solidity or any other language uh, whichever uh, virtual machine we are using uh, so that's how uh, everything is governed that is why mediator costs are removed and that's how transaction costs uh, are eliminated or reduced so the next point is high availability the, the three points inside it are distributed ledger p2p architecture and no single point of failure uh, distributed ledger is basically what we saw it is distributed across the globe and these nodes that run that have the copy of ledger keep the network up which is why it is highly available uh, which also means that there is no single point of failure there is no central server that fails and then the entire network is down nodes are running all over the world and p2p architecture is basically the peer-to-peer -peer architecture that we saw now let's see what are differences between blockchain and traditional database to better understand how we can compare it with the current technology that we have so blockchain is basically decentralized and distributed network by now you know what this means and database is centralized network so what Facebook is, what Amazon, what Google has. So they have their central servers uh, running. We have seen how Facebook has failed uh, many times. There have been network outages and entire Facebook, Instagram has gone down. So the second point is only append operations are possible and here all CRUD operations are possible. So append is basically we can only append the data that is already there. We cannot replace that data and in the crud operations mean bas means basically create read update and delete all of that is possible in database so as we have only append data the data is immutable here and data can be changed by the authorities that have the rights to do crud operations on the database the next point is does not have a central point of failure this has a central point of failure which we saw uh, in the earlier slides also in blockchain, only hashes of actual data are encrypted and stored in blocks. In database, the database admin can read all the data stored in database. So here, although the data is transparent, but what actually has happened is hashed and encrypted. What we saw, uh, we get it as a transaction hash. But in database, the admin has access to everything. He can do whatever he wants with your data. So that is more or less what is the difference between blockchain and the traditional database that we have. Now let's see what are types of blockchain. The first one is public blockchain. So public blockchains, we all know what is public blockchain. By now we have seen uh, what it is. 
So transactions and data are viewable by all participants. We saw this in the Etherscan example. The participant identity is kept anonymous. So we saw the wallet address, but we don't know who that wallet address belongs to since there are no KYCs and all of that that is done. Then these are generally referred as pseudo anonymous blockchains. So pseudo anonymous because we know that this wallet address exists, but whom that address belongs to that we don't know. But we can track that wallet address that what all uh, transactions it has done. And the examples are Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dash and many more. The next one is going to be private blockchains. So the transactions are kept secret and only visible to admins. Uh, the use case, we will be talking about it. All participants are known and belong to the same organization. And these blockchains are used for enterprise solutions. So basically the transactions which we were viewing on Etherscan, that is not the case in private blockchains. Only admins can view them and all the participants everyone in the uh, private blockchain is known and belong to the same organization so this is why it is uh, used for enterprise solutions and examples are multi-chain and block stack these are quite rarer uh, examples if you want to know more about it we'll make a video on this as well and the last one is permissioned blockchain so transactions are semi-secret and visible to specific members. So that can be admins, that can be some uh, collaborators that they have set uh, and some special permissioned people that can view the transactions. And all participant identities are linked to their original identity. So this, is, this means that identities are KYC uh, enabled and this does not have an anonymous nature like the public blockchains we saw. Examples are Hyperledger, R3. Uh, so Hyperledger is quite popular. Uh, I, I think you might have heard about it. And these are basically the three types of blockchain. And this was the basic overview on blockchain. We'll be making more of these videos. If you like it, then make sure to like the video. If you have watched it so far, do subscribe to the channel and see you in the next one.